Okay, I hope everyone had a wonderful day. To me, it was a simcha. My grandson, uh, I saw Elia T.S. here somewhere, and uh, my grandson, Natan Moshe, had his uh, upsharing. It was interesting. It was a Zoom upsharing. Some of us were able to uh, come with the mass and get a snippet of uh, here. Mark Hashem, you know, he grew, up, he grew up in one day, suddenly he was a little beast, and now he looks like a little boy. May they have much nachas from him. May we have nachas from him. May we be here for a long time to his chasna, his children's weddings. May we see him go, Michael Lachoyal, as he starts his career of chinuch. And uh, the first mitzvah is uh, obviously paying for right. So there we go to olive base. He ate up the olive base like the most, the most voracious um, olive base. I, I, my minute of those who know. I have a shtick, and I, you know, the old custom is to take um, honey and make icy ice out of olive and then take the kid to taste it. But kids today don't usually do it. They don't usually eat raw honey. So I use fruit uh, roll em ups and I make into shapes of the olive face. And, uh, you know, and I take the, I show them the olive and then they take it and they eat it and they see, they, you see, it's very sweet. So he gobbled it up. He should, I gave my daughter a bracha that he should, you know, gobble up every morsel of Torah for the rest of his life with the same zeal. <laughs> he ate up all those ICS. He stuffed olives through hay. He went through it in Mamash in no time. Adorable. and horrible and horrible. Hashem bless him and his older sister. Anyway, so, you know, and there he is. There he is. <laughs> That's him. I don't know if you see him. Just took a bath. That's Natan Moshe, a little boy with a nice little haircut and a nice little chup, like a Zadie. <laughs> Mazel hey, Tov, hey. Natan Moshe. Hey, that's Mr. Shandlin, his mora. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, that's so exciting. Mazel Tov, lots of nachas. Okay, thanks. Station Amen. identification, as they say, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so, so, um, what was I saying? Where was I up to? Oh, yeah. So, of course, I, I you know, I, I sang the Zemiris to myself a little bit. I heard it. On the, on the internet, all kinds of the Maran. I participated a little bit in Rabbi Goldberger's last night. I, I zoomed in. He had a beautiful, um, like, by a Zoom with different people singing. It was very, very touching. And uh, it was very, very nice. A dear friend of mine, Rabbi Amnachem Goldberger. And, uh, you know, when I heard the words, something struck me. It says, one of the stanzas in Bar Yechai, it's still, it's still waning. <clears throat> we can still uh, warm ourselves from the fires of Rabbi Shimon Yechai. It says in the second stanza, Bar Yechai, the son of Yechai, Moshev Toiv Yoshafta, a good situation you found yourself in. You found a good place to sit. Yom Nasta, the day you ran away. Yom Asher Barachta, the day you fled. Bemora Surim Shemanata in the cave. And by the way, we know where the cave is. There's a there's actually a cave in Pekin today. You go with a good tour guide. It's a Druze village. And uh, there's actually the cave with a carob tree and a Mayan right outside the cave. It's uh, remarkable. Anyway, so it says, B'ma'ara surim in a, a rock cave, Shamalata sham kanisa hoidcha, we're talking about hoid, vadarecha. This is where you got your hoid specifically. Not hoid, so somehow we're focused on the hoid. And it was, and I was thinking, I mentioned this early in the game when we started talking about quarantine. We didn't, we didn't have a havmina, we'd still be quarantined. And, you know, I mentioned the 13 years that he was there. And clearly, the, the, the uh, Bala Pismain, who, uh, the one who wrote this, was Shimon Lavi. He was a, uh, one of those who were expelled from Spain. He was in the expulsion. Goes back, you know, close to the times of Rishonim. And um, this was all written by Baruch HaKadosh and the, the deep concepts. And it seems like there's, there's a value. Maishav Taiv Yashafta, sitting in isolation is not such a bad thing. It says, in that Mara Surim Shamanata, Sham Kanisa Haitvadarecha. Rabbi Rabbi Goldberger pointed out in one of the things he spoke last night, he says, you know, when he came out of the cave and uh Rav Shim and, and his son, and they saw people, you know, doing such mundane things after having been, you know, raised themselves to such levels, they everywhere they looked, you know, it burned. So they, you know, like they couldn't they couldn't tolerate it. How can people be engaged in such mundane things? So God told them to go back. Why do you tell him to go back? Say, stick around, just hold the over, you know, hold your hands, you know, don't, don't react. I give you a year to learn how to get in touch with people. 
and how to live in society after 13, 12 years in the Cape. So, so I, I was thinking, you know, because sometimes in isolation, we become a little more focused, a little more introspective. And I think all of us uh, can certainly uh, say that. You know, you start thinking about, not so much about others, but yourself and how you fit into the game plan, where you fit in the game plan, what's your role. And, and I think that's really what it's about. You know, they, they, they obviously learned a lot about the, the depths of Torah, delving in Torah, but that last year, they spent a lot of time understanding, you know, who are we here? What are we here in this world for? We're here to serve others. And whatever talent, whatever godless we've attained is merely here as a tool for Kodesh Baruch Hu. And as I said, hoid, hoid is the ability to radiate outwards. And being able to radiate outwards requires someone to remove some layers of himself to bring room in his mind and his soul and his emotions for others so that, you know, you think about them, you respect them. We spoke yesterday about, um, you know, his ability, Rav Shimon Yechai, his ability to respect every single individual and appreciate that's what it took him that last year. He finally learned in that year of introspection. And he realized that I'm here for everyone. Whatever talents I have, I have to make it work and give room, not only make room, but I have to actually expand myself and to include everyone into my, into my worldview and my, my mission. And that, that's really what I said. Aaron, Aaron is the height because that's who he saw. He saw and he appreciated. Everyone felt that Aaron understood them. Rashbi also. And, I, and today, and just to mention, the Dafyemi, there was a mention of, of, uh, about fires and other stuff, but one of the things in Dafyami today was um, the fact that Rav Shimon Yechai, Rav Shimon, Rav Shimon says, when they say Rav Shimon, normally it means Rav Shimon Yechai. Rav Shimon says, Kal Yisrael B'nei Malachim, because that's how he looked at everybody. He saw everyone as B'nei Malachim. We're all great. And even though some of us have other skills and abilities and opportunities that gave us uh, certain advantages, but in no way is it personal. It's all about someone else. And, and I think tonight is Yisait Shabahoid is really to contemplate about, you know, what is the essence? What is the depth? The, the Hoid comes from the more one can reduce himself and his own interests and think solely about others and realize that whatever strengths, qualities, talents I have is merely here to radiate outwards and serve others. That's the Yisait of Hoid. Who is the Yisait of Hyde? Yisait is, is Yisait. Yisait struggled with this. You know, he was in the South of Besaira. It took him a while. And he, his position with the brothers and, and snitching on them. But he finally learned his lesson after also uh, 12 years. Also, it was 12 years in, in, away from home and uh, a few years in jail. He was in isolation the entire time. He was in real isolation for two years in, in a prison. But uh, he also, he, he came to the realization that it's not about me, no matter what notion I have about myself. And of course, we strive to uh, attain whatever we can attain and amidas and what atunas and nefesh. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm here as a vessel to serve others. And sometimes we have to put ourselves and even the things that we think are important to us to put them aside so that we make room for others so that our height, the aside of height, that you side of moving ourselves totally. And that's at the end. Yosef tells his brothers when they suspect him of, you know, why aren't you treating us? They thought that he wasn't sitting with them because he had some resentment. Um, but, but at the end, he says, There's only God and me. I'm his vessel. Whatever you've done to me has nothing to do with me. I'm, I'm, I've reached a point where I'm, I'm, uh, nothing, it's not about me. Whatever, I was a vessel. You know, you, you, you know, Hashem puts me where I had to be to do what I had to do. That's your side, Shabbat. So that's really our, our, uh, our goal in life. And it's hard. It's hard, certainly within the family, you know, spouses and children and friends and siblings. And then the entire world, the more we see ourselves as the, see the side, Shabbat, and understand that, and realize that's, what, that's when we transition. After you say, you go to Mach Shabbat, that means... You've reached the epitome, your, your, your mom is a reflection of a Kodesh Baruch himself, the way you radiate outwards. So I want to share a beautiful story that I think really uh, exemplifies an unbelievable, beautiful story about the Yisait Shabbat, the ability to really make room for others to the point where I'm only here. Whatever I have to do to make it better for someone else, that's what I'm here for. So the story is written about, uh, I'm not sure if it's fictitious names, but we'll go with the names as it appears in the story. 
uh, Rafal and Tara Braun moved to Lakewood a few years ago. And there's adult communities in Lakewood. And um, Nebuch, uh, a few years ago, and two years ago, he passed away. The husband passed away. She was left in Amana. It's hard. I, I know my mother's in Amana for many years. And uh, Amana is being hard. It's hard being in Amana. She was grief stricken and, and, and certainly alone. And on top of that, so she had her children all those years, the last two years, after having a long, beautiful marriage with her husband. But then suddenly COVID-19 came. And then, you know, then you isolated. Like I mentioned, uh, I'm sure my mother's one of many. She has been in a room for nearly 50 days <laughs> without leaving a, a, a room that's maybe 15 by 15 feet or something like that. Any rate, and um, so the lockdown was in place and this was before Pesach and she was in quarantine, she was, she was in her home and it was hard enough not having her husband with her, but now she wouldn't have her children either. And she had to spend Yantav alone. So right next door to Mrs. Braun, Mrs. Braun the Amona, was Rabbi and Mrs. Farkas. And they realized that she was in distress. And they called and said, look, we got a great idea. Since our units are so close to each other, we are going to move our dining room table next to our open window. And you do the same. Move your dining room near the, t the windows that are separated between the wall and their apartments, where, where our, 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 our dining rooms are adjacent. This way, you'll be able to join in our Seder. You'll follow along step by step. And you'll, 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 you'll spend the Seder with us. And so it was. After the first days of Yantif, Mrs. Braun was so enthusiastic and so excited, she immediately called the children as soon as she made Abdullah on the first days of Yantif to tell her about the, the remote Seder experience. She was ecstatic. She said, I can't begin to tell you how beautiful the storm were. The Brauns were wonderful. I enjoyed every second. And the best part of all was the songs that they sang. The Brauns have the same in Hagem as us. They sang the same Nagunim that Tati always sang. Well, I miss you all so much. It felt so familiar and was so special. Mrs. Brown was content and comforted going into Chalamite like a different person. What Mrs. Brown did not know was that prior to Yantif, after inviting her to join the Seder, Rabbi and Mrs. Farkas called each of her children and asked them to sing them the Nusach and the songs that Rabbi Brown, her husband, would use each year during a Seder. The Brown children sent recorded messages of all the songs with the Farkas's proceeded to learn and memorize in time for the day's night. It was thus that an Amman of spending years of alone for the first time in her life joy and familiarity Now, if that's not you say I don't know what it is. That's an amazing story. That is It's unbelievable. But you can imagine, I'm sure, that the, uh, the Farkas has also had their long standing in Hagen. And they also had memories of their parents, I'm sure, were no longer around. And the traditions that they relished and that they lived in. And they're willing to give it all up. Because when it comes to the Yisrael Shabbat, there ain't nobody but Hatat Melek. You know what I mean? It's all the it's, it's that's what, that's what it is. And that's what we strive for. It's a big job. We, hopefully, in our lifetime, we're much older people. And we worked on it in a lifetime. They finally got there. And, uh, but the sooner we get there, the more we radiate the height hours, height of Hadar Lavashna, and maybe the height and the, the height and the Hadar that we live in our lives will inspire us and the people around us in the entire world. And I have no choice but to say, wow, such radiance, it's time to pull away the curtain, and it's time for all of us to come home.